Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Automation, and today is going to be another challenge recommended by my favourite commenter of all time, Vlad Kruglov. Uh, this is going to be the, what I like to call the Dog Paddler Challenge, in which he has challenged me to create a front, no, a front wheel drive ute with a pushrod V8 direct injection engine, so that should be fun to both make and drive. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I know the body already that I want to choose. Uh, it is an 05 body that most represents the Holden Commodore range. There we go, and that is our baby there already chosen it's like it knows exactly what we're about to do all right so we'll want treated steel we don't want anything too light because this thing the commodore in real life is just a beast uh, monocoque chassis of course um you'll go we'll go on ahs steel for the uh, for the chassis uh, we'll dump the model gear up just so we can get the max amount of power from the engine that we possibly can uh front longitudinal engine we want the biggest possible V8 we can fit in this thing uh, and then double wishbone double wishbone excellent all right here we go so I'm going to base this on a lot of the old Commodore engines uh, that I've seen so these are about 5.7 to 6 liters um, have about 250 300 kilowatts uh, of power, uh, trying to figure out what that is in horsepower, about about 350 uh, for those watching in the Imperial markets. Um, aluminium block, um, believe dual overhead cam, yep, and we've got aluminium head, that, yeah, we'll add some variable valve time too. I don't think that they have those, but anyway. Let's crank these up. Oh! Actually, that's something I've got to... Mm. Normally, I don't have to think about how it's going to fit in a front-wheel drive chassis, but we actually have to, at the moment... Should we then switch the engine orientation around? Should we go transverse? Doesn't fit, but... It's a bit better. Okay, we can, we can adjust the width of this thing. Right, down we go. Increase the bore. We can get five liters. Can we get a 5.7? Okay, we can get 5.7. How high can we go? Can we get to six liters? Yes, we can. And a bit further, actually. Can we get to the 6.2 that was in the last series of HSVs? Not quite. Or can we? That'll do. That'll do. We'll put a 6.2 litre V8. I could probably get further. Oh yeah. Well, hang on. Let's let's see what we can do with a uh, 6 degree V. Oh god. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, I'm just gonna put a massive V8 in this thing. It's gonna be totally unrealistic. You know what? We'll start. We'll start conservative for now, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I just want everything forged, probably not built because I don't think we have the technology to do that in the automotive industry in Australia, what there is left of it. Uh, crank the quality up on that just so we can get 8,000 revs, let's get the VVT on it as well, and no turbo at all, this isn't an F6 Typhoon. And I believe what he wanted was, yes, he wanted direct injection. So we'll uh, max that up. And then we'll want probably the best non-race exhaust that we can get. It's definitely dual. We'll put a car because it's, you know, it's based on a road car engine. And look at that, already at 283 without any fiddling. So... I'm going to try and get this thing up to, oh, what did, what did the HSVs produce, about 400 kilowatts, round about there. So I'll try and get it to that point and I'll meet up with you when I do. Oh. 
Alright, I think that's as good as we're going to be able to do without blowing the engine up. Uh, that's a lot more strain on it than I thought we were going to get, which is slightly disappointing, but still 473 kilowatts. That's quite impressive. That's a big output for this thing. Um, yeah, there's definitely nothing I can do about the RPM limits, unfortunately. And as with the other challenges so far, I don't want to abuse quality sliders. So the final HSV performance spec Commodores that were produced only produce 400, which, I mean, I'm not surprised, otherwise you'd have this sort of thing happening, and then they did a supercharged version that did 430, so we've actually exceeded that, which is fantastic. Hopefully this thing lasts longer than 20 seconds when we bring it into beam, but uh, let's crank it up and see what it sounds like. Australia, huh? Excellent work, excellent work. Alright, so we've got our body that we want. God, it's red, but red being the Holden colour of choice, that's pretty much exactly what we want. We'll put a plastic tray in it so it doesn't look as ridiculous. And I know it's the stock automation colour, but it's pretty much a very similar shade to the Holden, Holden Racing Team colours, which I'll flash up for you now. Try and see if I can get it as close as possible to my ugh, to my reference image here. Don't think we're going to get any closer. There you go. I can make it a bit darker. There you go. I think that is reasonable. Excellent. Alright, now we want to make it, or oh, I want to make it look at least kind of like the uh, the actual Commodore. So I'll see what I can do about that and I'll meet you back up once I have made my efforts. And that should just about do it, I reckon. I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my VF Commodore facsimile. We won't call it an exact replica, but uh, cool. Okay, that's done. Let's, oh wait, hang on. I should add an aerial to it. I always forget one thing. I mean, it's never that important, but it's just something that finishes off the rest of the car, really. Okay, there's nothing nothing silly that I've forgotten. Fuel caps on there. Yeah, yep, yeah, we got we got everything we'll really need. Excellent, so <sighs> checking front wheel drive, good lord. And then you gotta you gotta have it a manual. Uh, we do a six speed over here. Top speed of these things roughly 
Yeah, 270, that's that's fair. Maybe two, maybe 280. Um, yeah, sort of average to long gearing on these things. I'll put an LSD in it because we're going to need it quite a lot, I should assume. Uh, sports compound and I, oh, I'd really love some big front tyres, but look at that. That's that's woeful. Oh, this thing's going to be awful. Awful to drive. We'll get some alloys on it. Um, not that the unsprung weight's going to make a difference when you've got 470 kilowatts going to the front wheels. We'll need all the braking power we can possibly muster. Uh, bigger, <laughs> bigger front discs than really I think most Commodores would have. Uh... Actually, I'll put the brake bias a bit at the rear because the front's already doing a lot of the work. Um, yeah, we won't. Yeah, we'll just put fully clad on it because we haven't actually got any. Oh, we got. We thought we got a front wing, but. Nah. Alright, so here we go. We'll want a sport interior, standard infotainment. This stuff really. Here we go. This is the important bit. Right, so we'll want as much help as we possibly can in controlling this crazed, maniacal piece of machinery. And then as much control onto the road as we can possibly get. Oh. Steering-wise, it actually looks pretty decent. Hang on, we'll try and tune it up a little bit more. Yeah, we'll probably soften it up because... Especially at the Oh, how do I counteract? How is it not understeering massively with nearly 500 kilowatts going to the front? Like, we're talking 650 horsepower. We're talking almost as much power as the racing equivalent of this thing would normally have. It's unbelievable. And then we'll really decamp at the front so we can get the power down, not very sporty, which I think is a blessing, let's be honest. And let's try and get that drivability back to 100%, which is going to be an outright lie, let's face it. Um, top speed still got some ceiling on it, I mean, let's see how fast we can make this beast. Well into the 300s, okay, okay, so 330 is pretty much our ceiling. Take that, and the wheel spin's incredible. What? Are we sure it's got that big engine in there? It has. How? These two graphs are lying. They have to be. They have to be. There we go. And that is already pretty much it. I thought we'd have to do a lot more work on this thing to get it theoretically drivable, but... Wow. I'm staggered. Okay, okay. So before we take it into Beam, we are going to test it digitally and see what time this thing can theoretically set. I say theoretically because I'm going to come within about probably a minute of it when I take this thing into Beam. And let's speed this thing up. Well... I was thinking maybe a 2.30 for this thing, maybe up to three minutes, but... Wow. This thing is surprisingly quick. I'm trying to remember the times of the two previous experiments, and they were well in the threes. So this thing will be the quickest thing we've tested so far, but let's export it. Just checking the stats. It's not actually as heavy as I thought it would be as well, which is interesting. Alright, what should we call this? Um... Well, uh, I suppose it's the opposite of a Holden, because it still exists, so I'll call it, <laughs> instead of a Holden, I'll call it a Droppin, because that's an original joke in Australia, and uh, the SS badges are a bit messed up, oh well, um, and well, we can't exactly call it the Commodore, because do you want to get sued? Uh, so what is, the Commodore is basically like a captain of a ship, so I'll call it the Sea Captain. After my favourite character from The Simpsons. Not really. Now, next time you're going to see this thing, it will be in Beam. Let's go.
Alright, so welcome to Beam. This is the drop-in sea captain, and boy does it look majestic. Um, now, I have actually shelled out for a proper PC-connected Xbox controller this time, so there won't be any awful, awful... Well, there will be awful driving, but I won't have an excuse for it this time. Alright, so... Where has the start command gone? There we go. Okay, so hopefully we won't have the problem that we have with the triple L four-wheel drive and everything will load in the back sector. So we'll just have to have confidence. Here we go. It's actually a good start. A lot less wheel spinning than I thought. This will be the first real test though. Oh, it's quite... Oh, yep. Yeah. No understeer my ass. Jeez, this thing is... <laughs> it plows! It plows! Oh, man. Well... Yeah, I actually had to brake for that corner, and this one's going to be an absolute nightmare. Will it be the first time I make this corner in this series? Yes, it will. Clambering over the apex. Only the banked corner to go here. This should actually suit this car quite well. Yeah, it's not bad until the exit. Yep, we're fine. And that's the first sector done. Timing splits up there. And I feel like it's quite good. I, I still can't see the time because I don't have the HUD settings up here. You're yeah, actually going to have to let off. The oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is bad. Okay, we got out of there. Hopefully not too much damage. Okay, the front suspension's collapsed. Yep. That's... I'm gonna try and battle on... No, no, it's... It's done. It there... Yep, there goes the wheel. It's done. It's done. Oh, we're gonna have to restart. Oh... Oh, come on! Come on! Made it. Excellent. This corner here is going to be an absolute shit show, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh. Right. This is proving to be a lot more difficult than I thought. You really have to use the whole face of every single corner. Okay, don't hit the tyres on the inside. Hell yeah. Okay. Break at the earliest marker, which is still too late. Barely make the corner though. I was I was just gearing myself up for another restart, but we make it through the second sector. And I'm I feel like we're so, oh oh no. Oh don't. Oh don't. Oh, don't. oh. Oh, I was so happy with making those corners, and then, oh, that's, mm, it's, it's not really salvageable, is it? Mm, no. I actually don't know how I'm going to present this now. Because we've had so many errors. There we go. Excellent. On the plus side, I'm actually starting to get really used to this first sector, at least. He says, completely butchering this bit. There we go. I feel like I'm fuel can saving on F1 2020 because I'm just lifting and coasting absolutely everywhere to try and make these apexes. Yes! Oh, that felt so good. Oh, that's really not started out well. But we make it. Okay. Break slightly before 250. 
It's always very deceptive coming through there, but that's, that's quite good. Okay, don't lose focus this time. It's going to have to be well before the earliest marker. Nope. There we go. <laughs> Bit of a nudge on the inside, but we're, we're using that to just guide the car around the corner. Where my braking marker is here, but we hit it. Excellent. Oh yeah, look at that. Right, two more corners to go. Oh, can't let it slip now. No, no, we've we've got it. We've got it. Yep, take it out as wide as you can. Oh, this thing has been an absolute travesty, but across the line we go. Two twenty-five. You know what? I'll take that. I'll take being ten seconds off. And as you can see, it is well faster than the triple L, which was just a shade under three minutes, and then the Trumpster being ridiculously slow, and then the pimped up version of that that I did, which was just completely undrivable. And there it is. That's pretty much how it looked after every single one of the previous runs, so it's only fitting that it ends up like this. In fact, it's a visual metaphor for Holden as a company, really. So, um... That'll do for this challenge. I think the next one that we've got lined up... So the next challenge, I think, is either like a pimped-up Civic VTEC-style thing or a rear-engined, really unbalanced, like, 70s sports car. I think like a Corvair or an original 911. So that should be really, really fun. I'll join you then. Um, stay tuned for future episodes and for other videos too. We're still working on some of the uh, Crows documentary series um, videos. Those are taking a year, so this was just quite nice to get this pumped out quite quickly. It's good fun, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next video.